Good evening friends. God bless you. Today I'm going to read something from uh, book of Genesis chapter 32 verse 22 and onwards. Uh, that night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants and his 11 sons and crossed the uh, ford of Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him daybreak, till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched, wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. We are going to uh, look this particular very, very interesting event. Um, Jacob is returning back from uh, his uncle's home Laban to back to his father's home uh, to his brother Esau and while he's returning um, he was afraid of his brother Esau because he has stole his birthright and he left um, he took away everything by deceiving and name of Jacob means uh, deceiver uh, so he has a reason to be afraid uh, of his brother because his brother was uh, hunter and he was more strong than uh, Jacob but while as we read uh, he's, uh, wh while he left uh, he sent his all possessions and everything ahead of him uh, he stayed back and during that night he wrestled with somebody and we knew uh, that he was wrestling with God and and here it is very interesting when the man saw that this man, it, it is not actually man it's a in human form God himself came and wrestled with with Jacob and when he saw that he could not overpower him he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched so when he was struggle he was wrestling with God it says God could not overpower him how that possible Jacob is a mere, uh, it's a simple human man. He was not even as strong as Esau. And how come God cannot overpower him? Because we know that as soon as God touched his leg, he's, he immediately became like, his all strength is gone. His socket, he, uh, uh, his hip was wrenched and he wrestled, uh, and he could not, he was started walking limping. So God could have, he, he he could have been killed in, a, in an instant. So there is something much more uh, meaning towards uh, is, is, is happening around here. And we need to look into this. Um, but before we look into that, what happened here, I wanted to explain a couple of things. One thing is that uh, you might have heard over and over and over again that give your life to Jesus and Accept him as your Lord and Savior, and you can have eternal life. And when people are not giving away, or when people are rejecting Jesus, does it mean that Jesus or God has lost the battle with the person? That's not simply true. That means we are rejecting God. We intentionally reject God. It is not that God, God, uh, we are winning over God or God is losing against us. So I think you understand the concept. When, when we say that God was not overpowering, it is not like, like Jacob was winning physical war. It, 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 is, it is a metaphor we need to understand. Like as we said that when we, when we call people to accept Christ and they, do, they reject God does not mean that they are winning against God or God is lo losing against the person who reject him. So what is happening here? 
we have to go back to the original story when Jacob ran away from his brother. And then he first night he, he went to sleep and he encountered God. And he took a vow and he said that, God, if you watch over me and if you bring me, bring me back safe, then you will be my God. And God faithfully protected Jacob for all these years he was away from home. Not only that, God provided everything he needed. He went there empty-handed. He came back with so much possessions. So God did whatever he asked. God kept his promise. What Jacob was not getting in. Have you heard, have you seen this in a, in a, in a school also? When teacher is trying to explain same thing over and over and over again. And some of the students don't simply get it. And sometimes teacher may get upset and say, why I explain you so many times, why you are not getting it? So from the beginning, Jacob, when he stole his birthright from his brother, and then when he fled, he took out all the blessings from his brother and he fled from his brother because he said that I will kill him. Since that time, God was trying to tell Jacob, Jacob, you cannot get what you want in your life by your, your own strength and by your own struggle. I am giving you free. I will protect you. I will provide you. I will be your pro, pro provider. I will be your protector. You have to start relying on me. And that message, Jacob was not getting it. And, and, and now he is going back to Canaan, to the promised land. He is returning back where he was. And still, he has not believed in God. So God is giving him one more last, last struggle. So the wrestling match was, uh, God is trying to explain him, Jacob, I can bless you. Why you are struggling? The whole night, the struggle continue whole night. So the whole night, like, like God is struggling with Jacob to explain him who he is and what he can do for him. And Jacob was not getting it. So God finally says, all right, Jacob, if you don't want it to accept me, if you don't want who I, what I'm providing you, you can go on your own way. And he touches his leg. And he showed that he is powerful God. And now, instantly, the light came on in Jacob's mind. And he said, oh, what I'm missing. Now he got it. And he said that, bless me. And then God says that, all right, Jacob, I'll bless you. But you have to change your name. You cannot be Jacob anymore. I'm giving you new name, Israel. And that's how Jacob's name was changed from Jacob to Israel. And friends, we have read this story so many times. But it could be true, true for you and me that we are struggling with God day in and day out. God wants to provide everything that we needed in this life. And he can provide much more then we can think or dream of. But still we are trying to achieve those things by our own good doings. I'm not saying good doings is a bad thing, but the, the intention or our, our, um, our idea behind that I can do things and get the blessings. That's a wrong concept. Because God is a good giver. God is a loving father. He is a father. And that is why Jesus says that when you pray, you don't pray our God in heaven. Jesus said that pray our father in heaven. Because he wants to call him as a father. He wants to have a relationship with you and me. Christianity is not about religion. It is a relationship. God wants to have a relationship with you and me as a father. And I hope as Jacob woke up, he struggled whole night. 
by by morning he got it he got it i said that okay god i am ready bless me and god blessed him and you know that how much israel is blessed today it survived everything it survived holocaust it survived the wars it survived persecution israel is still in existence god bless them god has blessed them so much because jacob says all right god i gave up you can bless me i hope you make that decision and you said god i struggled so long i didn't get it but i don't want to struggle anymore i give up i'm accepting as a free gift from you and all the blessings are from the cross because jesus died and he provided forgiveness and then he he is making us his sons and daughters and we have all the blessings that we can never imagine of may god bless you and thank you